Hi everyone, Exotic PC here with another video review. Today we are checking out MSI's GE62 Apache Pro-055. For the specs, we're looking at a 15.6 inch anti-glare matte type screen, has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. For the CPU, we have the Intel i7-4720HQ, which works at 2.6 to 3.6 gigahertz. That is not upgradable. For the video card, we're looking at the NVIDIA GTX 970M, it comes with three gigabytes of GDR5 memory on there, also not upgradable. For the RAM, pre-installed 12 gigs of 1600 megahertz. That is upgradable to 16 gigabytes at the max. For your hard drives, there is one 128 gigabyte M.2 that's pre-installed. That's upgradable, plus there are two open slots. Uh, those are all M.2, so it has room for a total of three of them in there. One terabyte hard disk drive that's in a 2.5 inch SATA bay, so you can keep that in there or even replace that if you like. For the optical drive, it comes DVD, CD, reader, writer, also upgradable, so if you want Blu-ray, we can do that for you. For the wireless card, Intel's AC3160, Windows 8.1 is pre-installed. For the warranty, we have a two-year U.S. warranty, includes one-year accidental damage protection that does need to be registered within 30 days, and you have a one-year global warranty with it as well. For the dimensions, we are looking at 15.07 inches across, 10.23 inches deep, and a thickness of 1.06 inches, and it weighs in at 5.29 pounds. That is including the six cell battery. We're just taking a quick look at the back of the LCD panel here. As with most of their gaming series models, MSI has included the backlit Dragon logo there. You can see it. The light is on. I'll go ahead and pop this off real quick so you can see it without and see how that lights up. We'll take a look at the screen viewing angles. As you can see, I have our colorful gradient up here, which we like to use to really look for any type of washout. We'll go ahead and spin the computer off to the left hand side and basically just keep an eye on those colors and see if you lose the colors as you move off to the side of it. And what I'm seeing on camera, pretty much what I'm seeing in person, really no color washout that way. Spin it off to the right hand side. And also very good doing it that way as well. Nothing really noticeable, nothing uh, in person or on camera. I'll go ahead and pull it down. And that looks really good. And I'll go ahead and lean it back. And again, really good. Nothing I would say is a problem on there. You can see the angle that it leans back at. So you can lean it back quite a bit, not all the way. But it looks like we still got maybe 45 degree or a little bit less on there. All right, so good viewing angles on this screen. We're taking a look at the keyboard. This is a full size, since it has the number pad off to the side here. 15.6 inch screen, that is typical that you're gonna have your keys with the number pad off to the side. As you can see, it is zoned by color. So we have the green, uh, red, blue, that is changeable with the included software. For the flex, Really no flex on there. This is made by Steel Series, as MSI likes to do on all their gaming series one. And for good reason, they make some of the best keyboards out there. Now, if I try to make it flex, you can see me pushing down. And it does move a little bit. But that's almost the whole computer moving as well. So you got the flex if you try to make it flex. If you type, really nothing there. OK, let's take a look at the touchpad real quick. And as you can see, it's right here offset but in line with the uh, the letters instead of the number pad it does have a separate left click and right click so it's not built into the touchpad itself the touchpad uh, it's got good texture to it of course you can click right here if you want to do that and you have the left click and right click on there as well 
You can also see there is a slight chrome bezel that goes around it. It's catching that light. That's a little coolness to it, I think. It kind of goes in tune with the backlit keyboard. And let's just take a look at the software real quick here. So we got the Dragon Gaming Center down here. We'll start that up. We got our utilities and the KLM, Keyboard Light Manager. And as it starts up, and you can see the different colors and the different zones that you can assign to it. So it's red right now on the left-hand side. If I click that and I want it to be purple, I can go ahead and click that and it changes instantly. So you can see if you like it or not. So let's see if I want it a darker purple. There's also some features that it has like breathing on there. So if you wanted to breathe and kind of just change with you, um, over time, you got the audio gaming, normal, wave, dual color on there as well. So a lot of different options that are built into it. And if you don't like it, it's bugging you, you can turn it on and off with one of the function keys. I believe it is function minus on the keyboard. Or actually plus to go down, minus to go up. Let's take a look at the ports now. We're on the back left hand side. Very first one there is your Kensington lock for security followed by your Ethernet port. We have a USB 3.0, HDMI, mini display port, another USB 3.0, another one. So there's three on the left-hand side, and we have our audio jacks there. So there's gonna be uh, your headphone and your microphone. See if I can get those a little sharper for you. There we go. Headphone and microphone there. On the front-hand side, nothing really there except for your status indicator lights. So on the left-hand side, we have your Wi-Fi, then your battery. That'll light up if your AC is plugged in, and then your um, power, or excuse me, that's your hard disk drive indicator. Anytime there's read-write going to the drive, you'll see that blink for you. Got your optical drive here. So that's your DVD, CD, upgradable to Blu-ray, USB 2.0, your memory card reader, and then your power port there. So we're off to the back left-hand side. We have one exhaust port on the left and a matching one on the right. So this has dual exhaust left and right. And we'll finish right off on the left-hand side where we started off. We'll take a look at the boot time. The computer is completely off. I have my phone set up. I'll go ahead and the power button and the start button at the same time. We'll try to stop it right when we get to Windows. So let's go three, two, one, go. And again, this does have that 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD installed. So it should be pretty quick. So yep, as quick as I could stop it anyway, 7.6 seconds. So uh, under eight second boot time, very fast boot times on there. All right, the computer is off. Right now we're gonna jump into the BIOS. So from the power off state, I'm gonna hit the power button and then just continually press F2. And that'll get us into the BIOS. So we'll just go over what's here on the main page. We see the system date and time, system language, SATA information, which tells you what drives are installed into which slot and the system information. So you have your BIOS version, your EC version, the RAM, the CPU that's installed in there. So it's just a bunch of information, nothing you can really change. The advanced tab here, we have our PCI latency timer, SATA mode selection, AHCI, since it is a, a SSD in there, you can change that to RAID uh, or IDE should the, you know, the circumstance need it. Intel speed step technology is enabled, uh, supercharger ERP lot three support, wake up on LAN S5 support, network stack, those are all enabled or disabled. Our USB configuration here, we have our legacy support, BIOS USB three support, and a few other ones here. UEFI BIOS update. Oops. Then we have our boot options. You can select to have the numbers on or off. That's relating to the keypad off to the side. Fast boot mode, boot mode select. And then our boot options here, where you can change what it looks towards first for your boot priority. And then your hard 
uh, excuse me, UEFI hard disk drive BBS priorities. Security, where you can set your password. And then we have our save and exit. So I'll go ahead and discard the changes and exit and just verify that and it'll just reboot right into Windows. We're going to take a look at some benchmarks. We'll start off with 3D Mark Firestrike. As you can see, I have our decimal meter set off to the back right hand side. Uh, that is the main GPU vent. I'll put my microphone down back over there too so you can hear if the fans kick up. As always, we will be overlaying our FLIR gun, our forward looking infrared and you can see where the heat is generated, like on the touchpad or the palm rest, the exhaust ports, things like that. And of course, we'll, we'll go over the results uh, once they're all done, as well as the temperatures. I have hardware monitor running in the background and uh, MSI afterburner, so we can check out the temperatures of the CPU and the GPU with the benchmarks. All right, Firestrike has finished up, so let's take a look at our scores here. You can see our total score, 6,538, again with us the GTX 970M and the Intel 4720HQ. Graphics score, 7,461. Physics score, 9,074. And a combined score, 2,786. Let's take a look at temperatures. The CPU here, we're looking at 86 to 88. So not too bad at all. Let's take a look at the GPU temps. Um, pretty low. So we are at 72 is the max GPU temp. Not sure if you can see that. I'll try to zoom it in. So there we go. 72 is the max. So that's very good numbers on there. Uh, pretty impressed, especially with the GPU temps. We'll run a couple more benchmarks and see how that performance is and the numbers on those. Right, second benchmark is done. We ran 3D Mark Skydiver. So you can see the score here, 17,750. We have a graphic score, 23,494. Physics score, 8,154. And a combined score of 16,662. So right on par of where we expect the GTX 970M to be. Let's take a look at the temperatures here. Kind of pretty much the same thing that we saw with Firestrike, so 86, 87, 89 for the CPU. And the GPU temps, a little bit higher, but really nothing bad. I'm seeing 75 there. I know it's tough to see that on this screen, but I'll try to zoom in there for you. But 75 max temperature for the GTX 970M. All right, 3D Mark 11's finished up. This is going to be the last benchmark we're taking a look at. As you can see, the score is P9056. We have a graphic score of 9,596, physics score 7,777, and a combined score of 7,708. Take a look at hardware monitor for the CPU temps. We're looking at anywhere from 86 to 88, and the GPU temp. 72. Again, tough to see that on this screen. I'll try to zoom in without shaking it too much here. You can see that a little bit better, but good temperatures all the way throughout with all the benchmarks, especially on the GPU. All right, we are taking a look at the read write times of the M.2 SSD on here. You can see the sequential read time, 527 megabyte per second and 470.4 megabyte per second for the write time. Looking at our 4K speeds here, we're at a 21.38 read and a 60.54 write speed on there. That's more indicative to your daily use small files. So it gives you a, a good look at the drive on there you know for a SATA 3 drive really what we expect out of it good speeds and as you saw earlier really fast boot up times as well 
We're going to pop open the bottom of the computer, take a look at the internals of it. You basically just need to undo all the screws around the perimeter in the middle. Basically, any screws that you see on the bottom need to be removed. There's this one right here that holds the optical drive in place. So you can, once you've undone that, you can slide that out, and it might make it easier to open up the bottom. So we'll go ahead and start lifting up. And with other uh, MSI models, you do want to get the back lifted away, and then you want to kind of move it forward and make sure you get the clips moving out this way here. So once you've done that, the big red area here is where the optical drive would go. And you can see that where it slides in and connects right here to that port. Okay, so here's one of the speakers. This is the subwoofer here. Looks like it. There we go. So we got the subwoofer here. We got the exhaust fan for the GPU. Got the copper heat transfer pipes going off to the heat sink that sits on top of the GPU right here. We got the battery in the back. The CPU is right here, so you can also see the copper heat transfer pipes that go from that to the other fan, and it also shares this one with the GPU as well. Got the fan here, so this is the intake of the fan and exhaust out the back. So when you're using this laptop, you want to make sure you're not blocking this here. Uh, let me just kind of lay this down real quick. You can see where those vents are. So do not block those or else you're going to cause it to overheat. Uh, so always use it on a desk or a flat surface. Got your Wi-Fi card here. Here's your uh, one terabyte hard disk drive, which is interchangeable. Got your two RAM sticks here. This is 12 gigs. It supports up to um, 16 gigs, so you can put two 8 gig sticks in there. Then we have an M.2 drive here, so that's a solid state drive. You can see there's also two other ports right here, and the screws already come pre-installed, so those are going to be available to you. Uh, should you decide to or have us upgrade that for you, uh, we could definitely do so. And then you can see one, two, three, four speakers on the front here. And that looks like that's going to be about it for the internals of the computer. Okay, that's going to wrap up our look at the MSI GE62. So thank you for checking it out, as always. If you have any questions, leave them below, or feel free to contact us directly. Phone number is 1-877-289-9684. You can email sales at exoticpc.com or reach us at our live chat. We're available 9 to 5.30 Central Time, Monday through Friday. And of course, our website is exoticpc.com. That's X-O-T-I-C-P-C.com. And be sure to subscribe and like and uh, keep up to date with any other further reviews that we do. But thank you for taking your time to check this one out. Have a good one.